In this lesson, we're going to go through 10 negative number type problems. We're going to have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Take this like you would take a little quiz, and we'll go over them, and you can see which ones you got right and which ones you need to practice a little bit more. So if you need to, uh, take a screenshot or pause the video, see if you can do these 10 problems, and we'll dive right in. Okay, so the first problem, negative 7 plus 12, did you get positive 5? Okay, just wanted to kind of go over this. So remember when you have seven negative numbers, you can think of that as like walking backwards seven steps. And then plus 12, that's like you're adding 12 or you're moving forward 12 steps. So think about relative to where you started, are you further forward or are you further backwards from the starting point? So that's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is you can think about earning money and spending money. So say, for example, if you earned $12, that's like a positive, and then you spent $7, how much money do you have? Well, you have $5 left, so you're still in the positive there. You still have some leftover money. Okay, so for number two, we have nine minus 20. Now again, you can use that same technique. You can think of, you know, you're starting right here, and then you're walking forward nine steps, and then you're walking backwards 20 steps, and then you say to yourself, hmm, relative to where I started, am I further forward or am I further backward? Well, you can see you're going to be further backwards from your starting point, and you can see that you're going to be backwards 11 steps. That's one way to think about it. Another way I like to think about it that can be a little bit easier is to think of whenever you see a subtraction problem, you see that minus sign, think of subtraction as adding the opposite. So what you do, I'll just do that again, is you when you see that subtraction sign, change it to an addition sign, but then change that second number to the opposite sign. If it's positive, you make it negative. If it's negative, you make it positive. Then what you can do is you can kind of think of this as like a, like a little scale or a little balance beam here. You can think of the negative numbers on one side, the positive numbers on the other side, and you're trying to balance. Now, if you had exactly uh, nine negatives and nine positives, of course, it would balance out and they would like cancel out and you would end up with zero. But in this case, you can see that we have more negative numbers than positive numbers. So you can see that the scale is going to tilt towards the negative side. How many more negative numbers are there than positive? Well, you can see there's more negative numbers by 11. So it's a negative 11. Okay, so for number three now, we've got a negative 5 plus a negative 8. Did you get a negative 13? Let's take a closer look at this one. So what you can think of here is like you're walking backwards five steps, you're walking backwards another eight steps. In total, you've walked backwards 13 steps, a negative 13. So that's pretty easy. So if you're adding two negative num numbers together, you just add the two numbers and it's gonna be a negative. The ones that are a little bit trickier, like number two, the one we did just uh, previously there, is you, when one's positive, one's negative, you have to see which one do you have more of when you're adding like that. Okay, so for number four, negative seven minus a negative 13, did you get six? Well, in this problem, what I would do to make it a little bit easier is, again, go back to that technique we were talking about earlier. When you see a subtraction sign, think of that subtraction sign as changing it into an addition sign, but then make that second number there into the opposite sign. So you can always change a subtraction into adding the opposite. Now it's a little bit easier because, you know, when it's addition, it's a little bit easier. You can think about, hmm, I've got 13 positives. I got seven negatives. I have more positive numbers than negative numbers. How many more? Six more. It's a positive six. Or if you like that technique I talked about with walking forwards and backwards, if you walk backwards seven steps, but then you walk forward 13 steps, are you further ahead or further behind from when you started? Well, you'd be further ahead because you can see you're walking forward 13 steps, so a lot more forward than, than backwards. Okay, so for number five, negative four minus eight, did you get negative 12? Well, again, on this problem, what I would do, I would do the same thing we were talking about in the last problem. When you subtract, think of that as adding the opposite. So you change the subtraction sign into an addition sign. You make that second number the opposite sign. And now you can see we have a negative plus a negative which is gonna be a negative. It's like walking backwards four steps plus another eight steps. In total, we walk backwards 12 steps. So for number six, did you get eight times negative four is negative 32? Now here we can see we're switching gears. In the first five problems, we were doing addition and subtraction. In these next few problems, we're gonna be doing some multiplication and division. And the key thing to remember when you're multiplying and dividing, the rules are the same. So a negative times a negative 
is a positive. A positive times a positive is also a positive. But what's different is when you have one negative and one positive, or one positive and one negative, so the signs are opposite, then you're going to get a negative result. So for number six, you can see eight times four is 32, but one of the numbers is positive, one's negative, so we're ending up with a negative number overall. Now, if you wanna think about this a little bit more intuitively, you can say, well, hmm, let's say if I spent $4, so a negative four would be like $4 that's going out of your account. And imagine you did that eight times. Maybe you bought some type of uh, coffee or something and you said, okay, I'm gonna buy eight coffees. So $4 per coffee times eight, that's $32. So it's a negative 32 that you're spending or it's going, going out or away. Okay, for number seven, did you get negative three times negative nine is positive 27? Well, here you can see we have a negative times a negative is a positive. So when you have an even number of negatives, you're gonna get a positive. When you have an odd number of negatives, you're gonna get a negative. And again, you can see three times nine is 27. A negative times a negative is a positive. Now, if you wanna think about this a little bit from a different perspective, you could think of kind of like when you uh, use two negatives in a sentence, like I'm going to the store. And then if you say I'm not going to the store, that not's like a negative word. It negates, okay, the fact that instead of going, now you're not going. But if you said I'm not not going, those two knots, those two negatives are undoing one another and giving you a positive. You actually are going to the store. So just a little bit different way of looking at it, but just remember the rules here. This is probably the easiest way for multiplying and dividing. So um, addition and subtraction, you have to keep separate in your mind from multiplying and dividing, a little bit different. Okay, so for number eight, 64 divided by negative eight, did you get negative eight? Now you can see we've got a positive divided by a negative. Remember when you see that fraction bar, that's the same thing as a negative, uh, as a division sign there. And a positive divided by a negative does give us a negative. Okay, for number nine, negative 144 divided by negative 12, did you get positive 12? Again, you can see 144 divided by 12 is 12. A negative divided by a negative gives us a positive number. So that's how we're getting that one. Okay, for number 10, negative four, squared. Now what's interesting about this problem, it does involve negative numbers, but we're adding in some exponents here. So you can see that we've got this squared here. But remember, what do you do first? We, you want to remember that PEMDAS. You want to remember that parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, right? So the first thing we have to do here is really to think about this exponent part first. 4 squared we know is 16. But then we're multiplying by this negative here on the outside, it's a negative 16. So you wanna basically follow the order of operations and then uh, the multiplication comes after the exponent. So for number 10, you should be getting negative 16. For number 11, negative two, the quantity negative two, I should say, to the fourth power. So what did you get for this one? Should be positive 16. Why positive 16? Well, you can think of negative two to the fourth as actually four negative twos multiplied together. And we know that when we have an even number of negatives, we're going to get a positive when we're multiplying. The other way to do it is you could do it step by step. You could say negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and then 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and then negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. But a shortcut is if you can count up those the number of negative numbers, if it's an even amount, you're going to get a positive. And if you have an odd number of negatives, you're going to get a negative. And the key thing here on this problem was that we really had this whole quantity in parentheses, the negative two. So it wasn't like number 10 where we had to do the exponents first and then the multiplication. Here we took the whole quantity, the parentheses as a group, then the exponent second. So great job. If you want to see more examples of working with positive and negative numbers and some more a reasoning by, behind why it works, go ahead and check out the video that I have for you here. And if you want to become a channel member and support this channel, you can join as a channel member and I would greatly appreciate that as well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.